I've been keeping reef aquariums of all kinds for the better part of 25 years. And 350 days ago, I made the announcement that I was going to turn this two foot tall wine glass into a self-sustaining Pico saltwater aquarium ecosystem. And we got there in the end, but not quite in the way that I wanted. Here's what happened. When I saw this for the first time in my wife's consignment shop, I knew that I had to make it into something special. And when she told me it had been sold, I was a little bit devastated, to be honest. But then she gave it to me as an anniversary present, which was completely awesome. A total W wife moment. Hey, you want to see something cool? I'm going to turn this into a saltwater aquarium. But first I had to make room, so I slid my beta tank over. And in order to make things balanced, I would need another five gallon with a black painted back. So I got to work doing that. And this idea was inspired by Gene Jalberg's Reef Bowl, for which this is the only video I can find on the entire internet. But I wanted to take it a step further and include his own design for a plenum in the substrate, stratifying the levels into a aerobic zone, an anaerobic zone, and a confined water zone that never intermingles with the water in the main tank. This leads to a nutrient reduction due to different methods and helps keeps the nutrients low enough for filtration to be kept at a minimum or none at all. So I got to work sifting the sand after I did that. I sifted the sand a little more and kept doing that until I ended up with two different grains of sand. Really, I wanted three, but two got the job done. So then I started filling up the tank with pre-mixed salt water that I had and stuck a filter on the back just to clear things up over the next 24 hours and added some Dr. Tim's ammonium chloride to kick off the nitrogen cycle and get things going. It was about that time that my light showed up and while it looked good in the tank, I really wasn't too happy with the mount situation and didn't like how that metal screw was pushing on the glass. So out to the garage I went to get that one piece of wood I've been saving for the last six years and decided to build a wall mount for the light and it came out pretty good. Shortly after that, the first life appeared in the tank in the form of a bristle worm. And I know people love to hate these guys, but they are amazing cleaners and personally invite them into my aquariums. They're easy to control and they're always super cool to look at, but they're kind of pokey, so no touchy. I wanted to speed things along, so I added a piece of live rock to the tank and then all kinds of critters started showing up. Little copepods crawling around on the glass and micro feather dusters and the tank was literally becoming alive with life. These little guys are one of the basic elements of the marine food web aside from just pretty much plain algae and seeing them scurry around on the glass like you can see here was just making me so happy. It was giving me the confidence that this tank might be okay. But these guys are so small with some of the smallest ones being only around a quarter of one millimeter in total length. And so this next inhabitant I actually put in the tank knowingly myself and this is an Aquilonostra starfish in the Asterina family. These guys are often hated in the reef keeping community and the white and tan ones are usually okay but the blue and green ones can sometimes eat coral so be on the lookout for that. And the bristle worms continued to multiply and they got a little out of hand so I decided the star of this tank would be an organism to keep these things in check and got an arrow crab. I brought her home and everything was looking fine. She was adapting well to her new environment. Isn't that face just so awesome? Only a mother could love it, right? And then came the time to add the first coral to the tank. And you can see from this time lapse just how alive these things really are. All corals are animals, not plants, just in case you didn't know. And this particular one is called pulsing xenia. A lot of people don't like these in their tank because they can take over and go a little crazy. But in keeping with the inspiration of the Jawbark Reef Bowl, this was originally intended to be what would create a tiny amount of flow in the tank. And then next up, we needed a few more cleaners to go in, and this guy was a little timid at first about coming out into the situation. But in the end, he opened up and got on with the business of cleaning up the aquarium. And look at all those copepods scurrying around. Man, that's awesome. It was about this time that I was met with a really cool surprise. My arrow crab was actually gravid and holding a bunch of eggs under her tail. You can see her tending to them here. And unfortunately, in the end, she had a bad molt and didn't make it. And I was super bummed at this point, but decided to push forward 
and just keep trying to build this thing into something cool. I decided to add a little hang on the back filter until the Xenia had reached the point where it was filling most of the top of the bowl and this has got to be the world's smallest hang on the back filter. Like for real, it has to be. It's so small. <laughs> so with some life in the tank, everything was going well and we were off to the races. One of my videos garnering over 1.1 million views on TikTok, but then disaster struck. Dude, lightning struck this freaking tree, went under the ground to that internet hub over there, followed the line to the corner of the house, went through the internet line into the house and cooked my computer. I'm not even kidding. I ended up losing a whole lot of footage in that computer crash, so that's why you're seeing a black screen right now, in memoriam of said losses. It wasn't long after that a really cool collaboration happened and Delua sent me this Illimagic pixel in the reefer coloration which really changed the way the tank looked, and I got some macro algae from Amanda the Macro Lady and things started to come together. The tank is alive with micro crustaceans and more bristle worms, of course, and this little flatworm seems to be absolutely thrilled with his new living environment, and I'm not even really sure where he came from, but he sure is a fast little booger, and some spaghetti worms are rounding out the bunch. In with the macro algae, Amanda included some dove snails, which have not yet started to breed, but I am hopeful for the future, and there's some more of those pesky bristle worms again. One of my favorite inhabitants of this tank that I did not knowingly put in here is this guy. This is a stomatella snail, and he is a super cleaner, although I don't think he liked me messing with his algae camouflage all that much. So I added a couple more coral frags. This little Recordia Yuma seems to be doing okay, and this mushroom is a welcome addition in the tank. It's gonna grow out and look really cool later on, the Digitata Frag, much to my surprise, has great polyp extension and is starting to plate out, which is super cool if you ask me. And so this is what the tank looks like as of today. I think it looks pretty cool and it's not quite what I envisioned when I started, but I've enjoyed the process. And so in two days time from the filming of this video, it will be the one year anniversary of my announcement of starting this challenging project. And I did get there. The tank is mostly self-sustaining. The only thing that I ever do to that tank is top off the evaporated water. I don't feed it, I don't change the water, I don't touch it. But there's just one problem. I don't like it. It doesn't have that wow factor that I was going for. So, make sure you subscribe to the channel because Wine Glass Tank version 2.0 is what's up next.